Hi, this is Jessica Timchuk, and um, welcome to my channel, my love for Jesus and share him with others. Um, today we're going to read John 10, and um, it's about Jesus being the good shepherd. First, I'm going to start with prayer. So, dear God, I pray that the Holy Spirit, through your Holy Spirit, you would speak to people who listen to this reflection, and um, they would remember that you are the good shepherd that Psalm 23 talks about and that you love them and you have come to give them life and life abundantly. Amen. So I'm going to start reading now. I assure you, anyone who sneaks over the wall of the shepherd rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. For a shepherd enters through the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him, because they recognize his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him, because they don't recognize his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration did not understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I assure you, I am the gate for the sheep, he said. All others who come before me were thieves and robbers. But the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. Wherever they go, they will find green pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will leave the sheep because they aren't his, and he isn't their shepherd. So the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he is merely a hired hand. He has no real concern for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me. Just as my father knows me, and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have no other sheep. Oh, sorry. I have other sheep, too, that are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them all so that they will listen to my voice. And there will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I laid down my life that I may have it back again. No one can take my life from me. I lay it down. I lay down my life voluntarily. For I have the right to lay down when I want to and the power to take it again. For my Father has given me this command. When he said these things, the people were again divided in their opinions about him. Some of them said he has a demon or he's crazy. Why listen to a man like that? Others said, this doesn't sound like a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Jesus claims to be the Son of God. Sorry, that's a heading. It was now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah. He was at the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Col Colonnade. Colony. The Jewish leaders surrounded him and asked, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you, and you do not believe me. The proof is what... Is what you, sorry, the proof is what you, is, is what I do in the name of my Father. But you don't believe me because you are not part of my flock. My sheep recognize my voice. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. For my Father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. So no one can take them from me. The Father and I are one. Once again, the Jewish leaders picked up stones to kill him. Jesus said, At my Father's direction, I have done many things to help these people. For which one of these good deeds are you killing me? They replied, Not for any good work, but for blasphemy, because you, your man, have made yourself God. Jesus replied, It is written in your own law that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say to you, you are gods. And no that the scriptures cannot be altered. So these people who received God's message were called gods. 
So why do you call it blasphemy when the Holy One who was sent into the world by the Father says, I am the Son of God? Don't believe me unless I, I carry out my Father's work. But if I do his work, believe in what I have done, even, even if you do, don't believe me. Then you will realize that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Once again, they tried to arrest him, but he got away from them. He went beyond the Jordan River, near the place where John was baptizing, and many fall. Oh, worse. And then he followed him. Jesus, John did not do miracles they remarked to one another, but all his predictions about this man have come true, and many believed in him there. So, you know, Jesus is the good shepherd, and um, if we are really sheep, as in um, we're part of his flock, we will recognize the voice of God and hold on to sound teaching and not be led astray by the voice of the world or the voice of the enemy. So um, if we truly belong to God, it says no one can snatch us out of his hand. Um, so, uh, and that also says that Jesus lays his life down for the sheep. That's what Jesus did, and that he can take it back again. So, um, Jesus is a good shepherd, and he's not a hired hand. He cares, and he um, knows his sheep, and sheep know him. So, we have to decide what fold we're going to be in, because there's the fold of the goats that follow the world, and the ruler of this world and there's the sheep that follow god so we want to belong to the good shepherd and be his sheep and be obedient to him so thank you for listening to this reflection god bless you